Hey everyone, Amy Chicken here. Today we're going to install Emule X4 to a Super Console X Pro. Recently I've compared PCSX Rearmed with Swan Station, which is the lib retro version of Duck Station, and praised the latter for a better racing experience. Unfortunately, it uses a lot more memory. If you need to play Naomi or Atomis Wave systems, you should stick with Emule X 3.9, as we only have 1GB of memory. It is very wise to make a clone backup image of your micro SD. You could even use a brand new card, which will probably work better than the one that came with your machine. So let's get to it. First, we're going to need to take out your micro SD card. Pop it in a USB reader and throw it into your computer. Boom. Make a folder either on your desktop or on a drive where you have some space. I'm going to call it SCX ROMs. Then navigate to the games on the micro SD device. The console X has data, ROMs as a default. So we'll click one, push Ctrl and A to select all, and then drag it over to the folder you've just created. Now you're going to have to wait for about five hours. Go get a coffee. Once done, go into MULEC and copy over dtb.img to your desktop. We're going to go to the Emulelec GitHub page, and then scroll down to where we have an Amlogic ARM64 4.0 generic img.gz. Right click that, save link as, and then we can select maybe a desktop. This is the image of Emulelec. We need to write this image to a micro SD. So in the description below, download Banana Etcher and install it. It's a very small file. Right now you can put in your new micro SD or you can use the old one and overwrite it. Make sure you have a backup if that is the case. Select the image we downloaded earlier, the Emulec Arch64 something, and then select the micro SD from the option. Press flash. If you get any pop-ups, hit yes. And this will put the operating system onto the micro SD. Once this operation is complete, remove it and reinsert. If it has to format, cancel. If you have the DTB file on your desktop, you can copy it over to the MULEC partition. If you don't have this, don't worry. There are a few DTB files on the actual device itself. So go to the View tab, make sure File Name Extension is checked. This DTB file lets MULEC know what hardware your box is running. If it's incorrect, it won't boot. In Device Trees, find P2121GG9SX. Right click, copy. Go back into the previous folder, right click and paste. Now this dtb.img, we need to click that, delete it. And then this file we just pasted in, we need to rename this to dtb.img. So now this micro SD is bootable on your console X. So you can right click, Eject, pop it back into your system, then give it a boot. It's going to take a few minutes to get the file system sorted. It's going to resize the partitions so it uses the whole of your micro SD. Once this process is finished, it'll throw you the first boot video and then a controller setting screen. Hold a button on a USB pad and then set it up. Usual up, down, left, right is very self-explanatory, but if you don't have, for example, an analog stick, you can hold down any previous button and it'll skip. One of the most important to bind is the hotkey, which is the very bottom. If you don't have, for example, an Xbox or PS3 home button, you can use select. So now we have Emulic 4. You can go through these menus if you like, 
But for the time being, we want to press start and then go down to quit. Then shut down system. Now turn it off, then take out your micro SD. Again, put this into your computer. Navigate to the SCX ROMs folder, and we want to put all the games back onto the micro SD. So select one, press Ctrl and A, and then drag these over to EE ROMs. You could alternatively copy them over the network, but it's going to take forever. So this way is much better. Still, it's going to take about five hours or something, so go get a massage, maybe a coffee shop. If it asks to overwrite anything, just press yes. So right click, eject safely, and then put it back into your system. Boot it up, and then press start, and then go down to network settings and make sure it's connected to the network. You could use a normal wired ethernet like I do, or you could use Wi-Fi. You know your settings for that, I don't. So go to setup scripts, press the circle button, and then go right to configure drastic. If you have a USB keyboard handy, pop it in now. And also internet is required. Press yes at this screen. And that's it, done. If you can't navigate this menu, you can press alt and control and then space. So let's get back to Emuelec. Press start and we can go down to updates and downloads. From here we can download different themes. I feel crystal is kind of clunky. Perhaps a different theme will save on memory. I'm going to choose ES theme Emuelec Carbon. In the bezel project you can download the bezels. These do not have Kinhank stamped onto them. Personally I don't use these, but if you do want to use them, go to the menu and also set bezels to on. So now let's go to quit and then restart system. We're going to let the console X boot up and then move on to our computer. In the description, I'd like you to download the Super Console X40 Emu Chicken Pack. Extract this to your desktop. This pack will speed up some games, add fixes and also configure to see the A1200 folder again. In an explorer window, type backslash backslash Emu Elec. This is our console X. We're going to copy over the contents of config files to the same folder on our console X. So select all the files, click drag across to a space on the right. Replace all the files. Then do the same with the other folder. Go back, ROMs needs to be in ROMs, okay? So select the files and drag them over to a place on the right. At the cursor it should say copy to ROMs, then replace. So let's go back to the console X, push start, go to UI settings. We can change the theme here. So now that we're pretty much done, I'll show you what I meant at the start of the video regarding memory usage. We're first going to look at Metal Slug 2 in FB Neo. At the top right, we can see that this system uses three to 400 more megabytes of RAM. In the fix pack, we added a clock boost on final burn titles and a few save games too. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 with all characters. Ah, Dan. We love Dan. If you want to use the superior PlayStation emulator, Duck Station, you need to convert the PlayStation PBP files to IMG or BIN. If you found there was nothing wrong with the PlayStation before, you can continue to use PCSX Reloaded. So what about the Naomi and Atomus Wave? Press Start, go down to Quit, and then hit up Start RetroArch. Doing this, we will shave off around 200 to 300 megabytes of memory overhead. This is pretty much the back end of Emulation Station. On the left, go to Import Content, then Manual Scan. Go to Content Directory, and then go down to Atomis Wave. Select, and then go down to Scan This Directory. Under default core, we want to choose Flycast, so press up, and then go to Sega Dreamcast Naomi. Now go down to the bottom, where it says Overwrite Existing Playlist, select that to on, and start scan. 
We'll do the same for the Naomi folder. Just press circle again and select Naomi from the content directory. There it is, Naomi. Go to scan this directory. Default core is set to flycast again, and then press start scan. Now at the bottom left here, we have Atomis Wave and Naomi. It's not much to look at, but you can select these to start the game. If you want to change out the games in these folders, you need to rerun the scan. Okay, let's try one. Same as in Emuelic, hold the home button and press start twice to exit, or you can press home and triangle to get to the quick menu. If you really want to play these games from the front end, then I suggest upgrading to either a 905X3 or 905X4 system, which can be had from around $30. There are some affiliate links in the description below. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to cover anything else on these Android boxes. Catch you around.